OK, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, I'm J my name is Amy Matheson, part of the engagement ICE team at Electricity Northwest. I'm joined by Victoria Brown today, who is Grid and Primary Programme Manager. And Victoria is going to um, take us through the interactivity process webinar. Um, which is inclusive of some scenarios um, just to familiarise yourself with, with the process. Just some general housekeeping. Can I ask that you all remain on mute? There will be an opportunity for questions at the end of the session. However, if there is something that you would like to use the chat function for, please feel free to, to address any questions in, in the chat. Uh, can I ask that your cameras remain off just to assist with the bandwidth um, and we will be recording the session so that will be shared with you um, in the next couple of days. Um, if there is anything that you would like to take offline following the session, we will be available for a few minutes. Um, so I will hand you over to Victoria now. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Um, so as Amy's mentioned, um, my name is Victoria Brown. I'm the Grid and Primary Programme Manager at Electricity Northwest. Um, so I'm sure that many of you on the call have actually spoken to me previously. I certainly recognise uh, a lot of the attendees on the list that I saw yesterday. Um, so as Amy's mentioned, I'm going to use this time today to go through the new interactivity process, um, how it's going to differ from the old process uh, and how it will impact your connection offers going forward. Uh, so this is the agenda for today. Um, so I'll start off with going through the background of the changes to the interactivity process and how that's come about. Um, our old process, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with already, uh, the new process and how it differs from the old process. I'll also then go through um, unconditional and conditional offers. I'll explain more about those uh, over the next couple of slides. And then just some example scenarios, uh, what the new interactivity notices will look like and how we're going to implement these changes going forward. So as some background, uh, in 2018, uh, the DNOs across the country, we consulted our customers uh, on the interactivity, uh, the process, how they felt it was working for them. Um, all the DNOs across the country were kind of using differing approaches. So their feedback uh, came from customers that they wanted a, a clear, consistent approach on interactivity, but they didn't provide kind of any feedback on what they wanted that approach to look like. So then in 2019, uh, the ENA formed a working group. Um, so it was to look at the process that DNOs would adopt across the country so that customers were getting a consistent approach to interactivity. And as a result of that working group, uh, it was decided that a conditional approach would be adopted. Um, so that approach was kind of taken from uh, the approach that WPD were using at the time. Um, and if you're familiar with WPD's process, uh, there's a lot of similarities with the process that I'll go through today and just some differences as well. Um, so upcoming important uh, events for this, we are looking to implement the new process at Electricity Northwest from the 14th of December. Um, so any connection offers that are interactive that we issue to you after this date are going to be on the new conditional process. Also, uh, we have started to send early warning notices from the 7th of December. Um, so some of you on the call will have had early warning notices already. Um, some of you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. So I'll go through that again uh, over the next couple of slides. So our old process, quickly. Uh, it was based on a moratorium period of 10 working days. So as we identified a new connection offer, um, we created an interactivity queue and then that queue had a 10 day moratorium period. However, if during that 10 day moratorium period, another connection offer was issued that then extended that queue, um, we gave we wanted to give all applicants the same 10 working days uh, to be able to accept. So we would reset that moratorium period uh, but obviously sometimes this did elongate the process. Um, so that all customers were getting the same length of time in which to prepare their acceptance uh, and submit that form to us. 
Um, however, obviously, with those continual extensions, um, if you were caught up in an interactivity queue where you were at the beginning and you tried to accept in the first moratorium period and it had been continually extended, it was becoming obviously very frustrating for those customers that were at the start of the process. And that was something that, that came out of a lot of the working group consultation um, was just how frustrating this approach was. So in the new process, the key differences are that we're going to use additional and conditional offers. And the next slide will go into some more detail about what those will look like. We are also going to give you early warning notices. So the purpose of these early warning notices is to notify you of potential interactivity. We're aware of that interactivity. Um, so it's to give you as much notice as possible that your connection offer is expected to be interactive. And so to give you some time to kind of get your head around that uh, and also to do any of the background processes that you'd need to look at before you submit an acceptance to us. You'll be extremely pleased to know um, that as part of the new process, we are removing this moratorium period. Um, so you won't be facing the same continual extensions um, that were such a nuisance kind of in the old process. It does mean though that the validity period slash acceptance period for all offers will be changed to 20 working days per applicant. So when you receive a notification of either unconditional or conditional interactivity, it will trigger a 20 working day period and at the end of that 20 working day period uh, the offer will then expire. Also we're saying um, as a concrete rule that conditional offers aren't required to make it payment of the acceptance fee until their acceptance is declared valid. So again I'll go into some more detail about this further on in the presentation but what that briefly means is because conditional offers will not be at the start of the interactivity queue other people ahead of them could accept. So you completely understand that people um, may not want to pay uh, for that conditional acceptance up front. So we'll only ask you to make payment of that acceptance fee if you're conditional once we've told you that your acceptance has been successful. So what are unconditional and conditional offers that I keep talking about? Unconditional offers, uh, they'll be issued to applicants where there are no other affected parties ahead of them in the interactivity queue. They will be given a 20 working day period in which to accept the offer and at the end of this 20 working day period the offer will expire. I'm not sure if any of you um, have had any kind of communication from any of the other DNOs on this new approach. I think a lot of the other DNOs are using a 30 calendar day period uh, but we've taken the view that we're going to use a 20 working day period to kind of keep things consistent so that everyone's getting exactly the same uh, amount of time. It's just a small difference that you might see and that's why I referenced 20 working days uh, throughout the rest of the presentation. So as I was saying at the end of that 20 working day period the offer will expire and as there are no other affected parties ahead of unconditional offers in the queue once you've submitted their acceptance the interactivity queue will end and all other conditional parties in the rest of the queue will have their offer. Uh, it does also mean though that if you are an unconditional offer and also for your acceptance to be successful you do also need to make payment of the acceptance fee in addition to sending us the form. Whereas with conditional offers Conditional offers will be issued to applicants where there is either one or more than one party ahead of them in the interactivity queue um, and they are dependent on those earlier offers not being accepted. So as with unconditional offers, the applicant will have 20 working days in which to accept their offer and again the offer will expire after this period and you will have to wait until all other offers ahead of you in the queue have expired before we can declare your acceptance as successful. So the next few slides, uh, we're going to go into some sort of scenarios for what this would actually look like a bit more in practice. Um, so you've got a bit of a visual reference for how it's going to work in terms of acceptances and withdrawals um, off the back of the information I've just given there. Um, so in this situation, um, this would be where we have a requirement to trigger interactivity uh, where we haven't yet sent out any connection offers. So you can see at the very beginning of the time scale, we've had an application from applicant one and an application from applicant two. Where the stars indicated, that's where we've looked at both applications and we've realised that there's going to be possible interactivity between the two. 
So at that point, we will send out that early warning notice that I mentioned earlier that will warn you that it's likely that your accept um, that your offer, sorry, is going to be interactive. So then we come to the point where we're issuing out application one. They applied ahead of application two, so they have a, a start date that's earlier than applicant two, and so they're ahead of them in the interactivity queue. So they are issued their offer as an unconditional offer with the 20 working day validity period. A few days after we did that, we're issuing out offer two, but they are conditional because offer one ahead of them could accept ahead of them, and they're then issued their conditional offer that has a 20 working day validity period. So effectively, the validity period of both of those offers is issued out as 20 working days. If at the end of that period, uh, either no acceptance was received or acceptance was attempted but it was unsuccessful uh, that offer would then expire and you would need to reapply which I'll cover in some more detail over the next couple of slides. So in this situation um, this is where we are triggering interactivity where there's already a valid connection offer that's been issued out uh, and is valid on the network. So we've had an application again from applicant one and we've sent it out to the customer at the time, there was no interactivity, so it's got its standard validity period of six months. Um, again, this is typical for Electricity Northwest. All our non-interactive connection offers have a six month validity period. At other DNOs where it's three months, it will obviously be three months for those if you're dealing with any applications elsewhere. When that offer is in its standard six month validity period, we'll receive an application from applicant two. Looking at application two, we'll realise actually this is going to need to be interactive with this offer that we've already issued. So at that point, we would send applicant two a notification of potential interactivity, and we would also send out an early warning notice to offer one, even though it's already been sent, to tell them that it's likely that they're going to go interactive, which is going to significantly shorten the validity period of their offer. Once we've prepared the offer for applicant two, you can see on the same day we're issuing out offer number two with a validity period of 20 working days. And we are then reducing the validity period of offer number one down to 20 working days. And so they've both got a, an equal 20 working day period. And then you can see at the end that kind of hashed bar representing the validity period that's essentially been lost on that six month time scale due to the fact that that offer has then become interactive. In this scenario, this is where we've had uh, an acceptance from a conditional customer, but as it's conditional, we can't validate it until the prior connection offers have lapsed. So we've had uh, offer number one issued out to the customer as an unconditional offer. We then issued out offers two and offers three conditional offers. Applicant three is being very organised. A few days after we've issued out their connect, um, conditional interactivity notice, they've attempted to accept. But because offer number one and offer number two still have validity period, we aren't able to confirm that acceptance to them. So then offer number one gets to the end of its 20 working days. They've not tried to accept. So that offer is then expired. The same thing happens a few days later for applicant two, they've not tried to accept, they're at the end of their period, so their offer also expires on that same day, because that now means that there's no other parties ahead of offer three in the queue, we are able to tell them that their acceptance has been successful. And also on that same day, we would ask them to make payment of the acceptance fee, and you'll get um, 10 working days, sorry, to make payment of that acceptance fee. In this scenario, very similar to the previous slide, but rather than a conditional acceptance, we've received an unconditional acceptance. So as you can see, offers one, two and three have been issued out in the same way. But towards the end of their validity period, offer number one has sent in their acceptance because they are the unconditional offer when they send in their successful acceptance, which does need to include the form and the acceptance fee. On that same day, we would write to offers two and offers three to tell them that their offer has now been withdrawn due to the acceptance of another party in the interactivity queue and that they would need to reapply if they want to pursue this connection offer further in the future. Because you've lost out as well on uh, validity period, it's been withdrawn when you were in your active validity period. 
if you do reapply to us within 10 working days for the purposes of future interactivity, you'll also retain your original start date. Um, so it can be particularly useful if you end up in interactivity later on again, because obviously the earlier start date, the higher up the queue you'll be. So that's the end of the scenarios. I'm just now going to go through uh, the potential sort of notices that you're going to see kind of from us going forward. Um, so this is an example of the early warning notice that you'll receive. So should your connection offer be likely to become interactive, you'll receive an early warning notice, which will look like the letter on the right hand side. It will inform you that it's going to become uh, interactive or it may become interactive and what the implications of this interactivity are going to be. Um, and we will send this early warning notice out to you as soon as possible. Um, so as I mentioned before, I know some of you on the call have already received these. Uh, in areas of the network where there's existing interactivity, we'll be able to tell you quite early on whether or not we think your offer is going to become interactive. But for kind of different applications, it won't be until we receive the network study that we realise that interactivity is going to need to come uh, into the mix. So you might receive that significantly later than another customer, um, but we will make sure that we get those out to you uh, as soon as we possibly can. And moving on to the unconditional and conditional notices. This is an example of the unconditional notice. If there's no other affected parties ahead of you in the queue, you will get an unconditional notice of interactivity. Now, this will either come to you via email um, if it's like the example where you've got an existing valid connection offer that becomes interactive later on. So we'll issue the notice out to you via email. Um, however, if we're making it interactive when we happen to be sending out your offer, you'll receive this notice as part of the connection offer that's sent out to you. So the notice will give you a, a date and that date is the end of your validity period. So if you want to accept the offer that you've been given, you need to accept by the date that's indicated because after this date, the offer is going to expire. And because an unconditional offer isn't contingent on other parties not accepting, we need you to make payment of the acceptance fee before end of the validity period. So on this example, at uh, the end of the 20 working day period, it's the 4th of January. So if you're in this position, you would need to send us your acceptance form and also your acceptance fee by the 4th of January in order to accept. Additionally, uh, for some of you that are applying for um, connections, so generation connections uh, over a megawatt or any demand connections that are connecting at 33 kV, well, we are charging assessment and design fees for those applications. So it may be the case in the future that other applications are being charged A and D fees, but those are the ones that are being charged A and D at the moment. Um, the interactivity process doesn't pause kind of any assessment and design timescales. So at the moment you have to pay your A and D fee within 30 calendar days uh, in order for your offer to remain valid, and this will be exactly the same. So. If A and D is relevant to your offer, you must also make sure that that A and D payment is made um, either by the 30 day deadline or also at the time that you're making your acceptance in order for us to be able to declare that as successful. The conditional notices, very similar. Um, you'll get a conditional notice again, um, either via email or in your connection offer when it's quoted. It will again give you the end date of the validity period. You must accept by this date uh, will expire. But because there are other parties ahead of you, we aren't going to be able to confirm successful acceptance until the validity period or periods uh, of all those ahead of you in the queue have ended. We will always acknowledge receipt of your acceptance so that you know that we've got it and we're looking at it. Um, and as I mentioned before, we'll only ask you to make payment of the acceptance fee once we've declared your acceptance as successful. Again, though, this process doesn't pause A and D timescales. So even if you are waiting for us to confirm your successful acceptance, you must make sure that you make payment of the A and D fee uh, by the deadline that's indicated to you on the invoice. So in terms of implementation um, and transition, um, we've begun issuing early warning notices from the 7th of December. Um, so maybe the case that some of you have received these already, I'm sure more of you will be receiving them kind of over the next few weeks as we determine that any applications are going to be interactive. 
the new conditional format for interactivity is going to commence on the 14th of December. Um, so that's next Monday. So any connection offers um, that are sent out after the 14th of December, we will be seeing them on this new unconditional conditional process. However, there is one small um, kind of exception to that where we've got uh, an existing interactivity queue. Um, so a queue that's currently in an active moratorium period. If we have to extend that queue, we will retain it on the old moratorium process. However, for any schemes that that applies to, we will still make sure that you get early warning notices um, so that you're aware of any impending interactivity. Um, and we will absolutely try to keep any such extensions uh, to a minimum. Um, but it's just to avoid having to change over active queues that are on the old process to the new process while they're still um, kind of in the mix. Um, if it was the case that we've got uh, an old moratorium period that's valid, say, for now, and it next week so end say on the 17th and no one tries to accept if we then re-trigger that queue later on that queue will be moved to the new unconditional conditional process and so if it became uh, interactive again at that later date rather than receiving the moratorium you would get uh, the 20 working day validity period after which the offer would expire so just to recap uh, before i move on to give you the chance to ask any questions you might have uh, the key changes of the new process are that we're removing the moratorium period in favour of unconditional slash conditional validity periods. We'll send you early warning notices to inform you of any potential interactivity and there is no requirement for conditional offers to pay the acceptance fee before the end of the validity period. If you are subsequently successful, we will allow you to have 10 working days to make payment of the acceptance fee. So I think some key uh, actions for you all to take away from this is that if you receive an early warning notice, it is likely that your connection offer is going to have a short acceptance period. Um, so you use this advance notice um, to prepare, so kind of schedule any approval meetings um, or undertake kind of any further works that is kind of key to you before you would want to submit an acceptance into us. If you want to accept your offer, you need to submit your signed acceptance and your payment if your offer is unconditional by the end of your validity period. So this can't be extended. It's a really important point that this 20 day period will not be extended under any circumstances. So if for whatever reason you can miss the deadline of that, um, there won't be anything that we can do about it and you will need to reapply if you want to carry on with the connection offer. And if it's applicable to your scheme, you need to remember to make payment of the A&D fee within the 30 calendar days as interactivity doesn't cause these timescales. So in terms of uh, any questions and guidance, you've got any general queries regarding interactivity. Uh, we've set up an interactivity mailbox. So it's interactivity at enwl.co.uk. So if you've got any questions that you sort of think of after this presentation, you think, oh, wish I'd asked that, just drop us an email to that mailbox and we'll make sure that they get picked up. Um, if you've got a query regarding a notification that you've received um, or of a connection offer, one either that you've got at the moment or one that you've got coming up, um, please get in touch with the engineer that's looking after that or the engineer that sent you the notice information. Um, there's some additional information regarding the ENA consultation and also how this is being brought about nationally on the ENA website. Um, and so we're going to put some further guidance regarding this on our website, where we'll also put a, a recording of this webinar um, so you'll be able to access that on the website for future use. Um, and then that brings me to any further questions that any of you may have. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in if that's all right. Sorry if you covered this and I missed it, um, but if we were had a um, conditional offer and we weren't successful, would we be offered the chance to reapply keeping the same application date as before? Yeah, so if you had a conditional offer um, and then we ended up withdrawing it because the unconditional um, applicant accepted, um, yes, you would have the opportunity to reapply and retain your start date if you reapply within 10 working days. Brilliant, thank you. And is the same A&D fee used or is that levied again? Um, it, it would be another A&D fee. So it, yeah. it would you have the A&D fee for your initial application and then it would be another A&D fee for the reapplication. OK, cool. Thank you. Hi, Victoria. It's uh, Lucy Taylor here. Hi, Lucy. Um, 
Hi, Charles has answered one of my questions about whether we'd have to pay a second A&VD fee. Um, my other question, uh, at the moment, uh, normally if uh, an offer goes interactive, you know where you are in the queue position, you know whether you're, obviously with this one we'll know if we're first because it's unconditional, but beyond that will the um, the letter sort of give an indication of whether you're second, third, eighth, tenth in the queue? Yes, it, it will do. So you'll still have an indication if you're conditional, um, if you're at kind of the bottom of a very big pile of other conditional offers um, or whether you're kind of more towards uh, the beginning. So yeah, we, we will give you that information still. Great. And with regard payment, if you're unconditional and mm -hmm. ND fees, is it cleared funds by five o'clock on that? 20th working day or is it just proof of payment because some of our clients do same day transfer some might be a back and that can take a number of days to clear um i think if you could provide us kind of with uh, sort of adequate proof um that payment had been made um from their bank account kind of on that day and it may not clear until the next day that would be suitable we've seen that previously um but it would need to be as i say sort of concrete uh, proof from the bank that it's it's left the account by 5 p.m on that day um, but we'd obviously encourage where possible um that it's made as soon as possible in that 20 working day period so that it's got time to clear okay great yeah, absolutely lovely um and one last question normally again if um say there are three offers out there and nobody accepts then it sort of reverts to your original sort of um 90 day long stop acceptance date does that sort of disappear with this new process that there is no yes. sort of you know that, it just it ends disappear. after that 20 days and that's that yeah and so, start. so essentially when you become interactive now rather than the moratorium period it shortens your validity to 20 working days so yeah. if you don't make any attempt to accept at the end of that 20 working day period so say the 4th of january with the example i had that offer would expire and Completely. in all of our records we would consider that offer as expired and we yeah. wouldn't consider it in any other uh, modeling that we would be doing as a creative connection it, it's gone okay great thank you that's brilliant thanks uh, sorry two more from me actually um is this based on the ENA's consultation and sort of preferred position? So this we could expect to see this across the whole industry soon. Yes, absolutely. So um, the working group that I mentioned at the start, um, the whole purpose was that there's so a, a consistent approach across the country. Um, so unconditional, conditional uh, methods of interactivity um, should be being rolled out by all the DNOs, I believe, by the end of December. OK, brilliant. That's that's helpful. Thanks. And uh, also on the interactivity notice, mm -hmm. um, will like a reason for the interactivity be given? So it's often quite useful because you can kind of try and gauge what remedial works might be needed if we reapplied, etc. Um, we, we won't be sort of putting it on the standard notice what the reason is. However, you know, if you get in touch with us, um, it's usually the same old faces sort of sending out the office for you anyway. You sort of yeah. get in touch and ask what's the reason for interactivity? Um, we can give you a steer on that uh, and also if it's available to us we can sort of indicate if you're unsuccessful and you reapply um, whether we think it will be kind of mitigated by some reinforcement or whether we think it's going to be a significantly different POC um, but obviously that's going to massively depend on a scheme by scheme basis the level of information we can give. Okay brilliant thank you. Charles it's uh, Stephen Jones just to to further emphasise Victoria's point to your first question um, this is absolutely now meant to be or agreed by the DNOs to be a, a nationally standard um, proposal that we put a voluntary commitment on to have embedded across the country by the end of this month. Um, how that's going to go, I'm not 100% sure. The only thing you should see is minor um, changes like Victoria mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, I don't know if you were on at that point, where we have opted for the 20 working days. Um, others are going for 30 calendar days on the interactivity validity period, but they, that, that sort of administration style change should be the only difference you see. That's great. Thank you, Stefan. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, we are going to put it before everybody drops off um, a short poll in the chat function for you to just provide us with some feedback on today's presentation. Um, just to reiterate uh, what if you
who have any queries in terms of um, what's been covered today, um, anything in particular, you can either uh, get in touch with myself and I can pass that over to Victoria, which is ice at enwl.co.uk. Um, alternatively, any general queries can go through to the interactivity mailbox, which is interactivity at enwl.co.uk. We will make the slides available and the recording for you in the next couple of days. And we will be available for a few minutes now at the end of the session, should you have any questions that you'd like to address with Victoria or the team offline. Um, and thank you for your participation today.